All right, welcome everyone. So uh, we'll be getting started here in just a few moments. I see that we're still getting a lot of attendees uh, joining in, so we'll give it a few more seconds to get started. Uh, one thing I did wanna say is to uh, feel free to make use of the chat feature, ask any questions that come up along the way. Uh, I won't be stopping to answer any questions throughout the, the presentation. However, towards the end, there will be a Q&A section where uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And as well, we will have people on hand to uh, do any follow-up for any questions that I can't take. Okay, so uh, looks like we can go ahead and get started. So I'm on the generation with Chime. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Emilio Villarol. Uh, I had product marketing and operations at Chime. I'm a marketing expert with close to a decade experience in marketing with about two years specifically in the real estate vertical and helping agents succeed via digital advertising. I'm responsible for bringing Google partner status to Chime and hold various certifications in digital advertising and have a strong background in SEO, SEM, content marketing, and more. And as for Chime, Chime is a real estate sales and marketing empowerment solution suite. Uh, through our responsive CRM, intelligent IDX sites, and expertly managed lead generation and other offerings, we help agents and teams of all sizes succeed. So let's jump into it. We're talking about online lead generation. And typically when I discuss online lead generation with real estate agents, I get met with essentially a groan and one of three responses. Well, you know, when I, when I try online lead generation, when I tried it out, I got leads that were just browsing or, you know, maybe the contact information wasn't there or I just couldn't get a hold of them or, yeah, they said they were interested, but they were, you know, looky loose and, not really looking to buy until six, eight, 12 months down the line. And in response to that, a lot of real estate agents will then go ahead and turn to these third party lead providers. So you're talking about the Zillows and Trulia's and Redfin's and Realtor.com uh, and more. And effectively, what you can see here is that they're doing the exact same thing. All of these third party lead providers are still advertising on Facebook and Google. So they're essentially not only in existence, but also thriving based off of you paying them your marketing budget to advertise for themselves. And what I mean by that is that instead of over here, you know, where you see Zillow and Truly and et cetera, instead of seeing your name and your face and your you know, real estate agent or, or brokerage, you're instead advertising for a different company. And on top of that, when they do get those leads that come in, they end up becoming shared leads and they share them with your local competition. So let's take a look at the platforms across the board. When you're dealing with Facebook, uh, typically what you're going to see is the largest number of leads. However, you'll see that the largest percentage of them tend to be the ones which, we'll go ahead and for lack of a better phrase, say low quality. Maybe they're ones that are just looking or not so interested, or maybe you know, you're know you not really quite sure if they're gonna pan out, so you don't wanna spend a lot of time on them. With Google AdWords, uh, you're advertising based off of intent. So typically you do see more leads which are interested. However, you do tend to see a more expensive lead and then as such, you tend to get fewer leads. And then with third party leads, what you tend to see is that you end up with a more expensive cost per lead than both other platforms. However, you tend to find that a higher percentage of them uh, are interested in moving forward with the transaction. However, as we demonstrated earlier, you're essentially marketing to the same audience. You're doing the exact same thing. So why pay more for less leads? Well, for some, they might say, well, because I don't have the time to go ahead and deal with all these people who are, you know, maybe just looking or who aren't really sure what time frame they're looking for. And that's where the importance of having an automated system comes into play, not only for interacting with those leads, but also nurturing them online so that you can encourage them to shorten that window from contact to close. So the advantage of top of funnel advertising. Rather than advertising at the bottom of the funnel, rather than paying these third party providers to give you the leads that they've already filtered out, you want to go ahead and start from the top. Now, what that means is that, yes, you are going to have a higher percentage, which maybe aren't immediately interested, but you're going to have a lot of benefits. The least of being more leads for a cheaper cost per lead. In addition, you're going to have lead exclusivity. So with Chime, the way that we advertise, and if you were to go ahead and run these advertisements on your own, of course, these are going to be exclusive leads. These aren't leads which we're going to share to three different agents and wait for the first one to contact and so forth. These are leads which are going to, towards you, for you. Any of the advertisements are 
branded with your name or your team or your brokerage on it. And you're not only getting the lead, but you're also getting the benefit of anytime someone sees that advertisement, your team or your agent's name is then becoming top of mind. And as such, they're going to remember you better. On top of that, these are non-harassed leads. Uh, when you're dealing with the fact that everyone's preaching speed to lead and you have multiple agents which can contact the same lead, you may end up with a lead that within the span of 30 minutes, they've gotten six phone calls, two texts, and an email as a best case scenario. When you're dealing with leads that are exclusive to you, well, you have the benefit of being the only one that's talking to them, assuming they haven't registered elsewhere. And because of the fact that um, research shows that something like 70% of leads will go ahead with the first agent they speak with, so long as you do have a system in place to make sure that you're being notified and that you can contact those leads as soon as they input that information, chances are you're gonna be the only agent that they speak with and the one they end up working with on the road. And finally, and I cannot stress this enough, rich lead information. There's so much information and so much data that you get when you end up running the advertisements uh, from the top of the funnel that you don't get from these third-party lead providers. And this information is key and can be used for retargeting, um, targeted follow-ups, and more. So a big assumption. The idea that if you're doing the, the, you know, if you're following best practices and doing advertising the right way, then all things are equal uh, is kind of asking a lot. And I say that because in my experience, most advertisers um, oftentimes are missing the mark when it comes to the best practices. And largely this reflects the fact that this landscape is constantly changing, constantly shifting week over week, month over month. Here's some of the things that we do in order to differentiate us and drive more traffic to you at a lower price. One, uh, Google Partner Ads proficiency. The other being we have our sites that are not only playing well with Google, but they're specifically designed so that when we run our Google ads, Google understands those advertisements well and will respond favorably to them. More on that later. We offer Facebook's dynamic ads for real estate, which is an exciting new advertising offering, advertising placement that I'm more than happy to discuss in a little bit. Cross-channel remarketing. Um, regardless of whether your leads are coming from Facebook or they're coming from Google, or even if they're coming from a third party, uh, or let's say, for example, you just happen to upload a list of your sphere, we can go ahead and do, and do remarketing to those leads. And finally, we have an integrated automated nurturing system with Chime. Now, the importance of this is not only when you're dealing with the offline interactions via you know, uh, texting and calling, but this actually has a very, very significant portion or significant impact in the way that we run our advertisements, uh, which I'm very excited to explain to you guys in a little bit. Google at a glance. So uh, Chime is a certified Google partner, which means that we've proven to Google that we are experts at using the AdWords ad platform and have demonstrated success month over month in advertising. In addition to that, um, to, to dig a little bit under the hood and to talk about Google and to talk about how Google runs their ads, essentially one thing you need to understand is that uh, these big companies like Facebook and Google, well, they care a lot about staying on top. And if you think about Google and you think back on the history of Google, well, they essentially came into power, came into popularity because of the fact that they took advantage of offering a better search experience than what Yahoo offered. Yahoo was cluttered and full of ads and wasn't giving people what they were looking for. Then they came to Google because it was a simpler, better experience. Google doesn't have a short memory. They're very cognizant of this. And because of that, they wanna make sure that they deliver the best possible search experience that they can for their searchers. And one, that plays into the organic side, but it plays into the paid side as well. And one factor of that in determining where your advertisement is going to be, whether it be buried in you know page eight at the bottom or all the way at the top of page one, is dependent upon something called quality score. So when you're dealing with these ads, yes, you can bid and yes, you can throw more money at it to try and push it up higher to the top. But what Google really cares about is the overall ecosystem. And that means making sure that overall, most people are finding exactly what they're looking for. So they're going to make it easier to, find, to get the top when it feels that your content matches what people are looking for. And with that, there's essentially two sides. One, the soft side, which is kind of going into the keywords that we go for, as well as the advertisements and the way that we write them. And also the landing page, which um, the wording that we use on it, but also on the back end and the technical side and making sure that all of the data is written in a way that Google can easily understand so that every piece along that process, 
Google feels, okay, these guys are, are offering exactly what they say. When someone is searching for you know, a home in Austin, Texas for 250K, and those are the keywords that they're bidding for. When someone searches for that, that's the first ad that's gonna pop up. When they click on that ad, it's gonna say what they're looking for. And when they get on that landing page, meaning the property page, it's gonna be properties which are, again, matching 250K in the Austin area. They pay attention to the entire process to make sure it's good for the searcher. And at that point, they reward the advertiser, us, by giving us a lower cost per lead. Another thing that we offer is retargeting. Um, and again, going into that, we offer retargeting all across the board. So we can, you know, on the Google side, uh, we can take it so that if you have a specific list of people, ideally a pretty robust or large list, we can go ahead and push the ad so that way uh, they have a higher likelihood of seeing them than the average searcher. Um, and then we can also take it so that if we do have leads coming back from there, we can go ahead and remarket in our other platforms as well. And another thing that we're excited to talk about is dynamic ads. Now, this isn't to be confused with the uh, dynamic ads for real estate, which is a Facebook offering. Google offers dynamic search ads, uh, which effectively allows them to put the ads together for you based off of some predefined rules and settings. And it's a pretty exciting offering. Um, however, it's one that we haven't quite rolled out yet, just due to the fact that while we have seen some promise in some areas, uh, because of the fact that Google is putting it together for you, and because of the fact that you don't have as much control of the process, we need to make sure we really dial in to get those um, you know, initial setup uh, settings just the way we want them to where we feel comfortable rolling that out on a nationwide scale and making sure it's going to be a benefit for all of our agents. Facebook at a glance. So um, Facebook's been really, really interesting to follow lately, especially with you know uh, all the stuff that's going on in the news and, and with politics. And it's actually had a pretty significant impact in the way that Facebook uh, allows you to advertise on their platform. We're really paying attention to all that. Where you know whether it be the shifting targeting options because of changes in the way that they look at privacy, or um, you know as I talked about quality score with Google, Facebook does a similar thing uh, and they're changing currently what they consider to be kind of a, a good quality or really relevant ad. Um, these changes in the landscape are things which, you know, we as advertising nerds are really on top of. We really read all about it, make sure that we're prepared when those changes do go live, that none of our agents and none of our clients are going to suffer at that. And instead, they're going to benefit by being the first ones ready to pivot off of those changes and take advantage of, you know, a landscape which is welcome to um, people who are, you know, responsive and adaptive and know what's going on and what to do with it. One of the things I want to talk about today is one of the most exciting new updates to Facebook and Chime's advertising offerings in DARE, Dynamic Ads for Real Estate. So uh, what is DARE? Now, when we're talking about advertising on Facebook, uh, typically it's a pretty start heavy process. And what that means is, you know, essentially you pick out the creatives, what kind of images you wanna go ahead and use or video, uh, then you'll go ahead and, and choose your advertising copy, set the, the individuals that you're gonna go ahead and target to as your audience. And then if you're lucky, if you have the time, if you have the budget, maybe you're gonna go ahead and set up multiple variations where you can go ahead and run concurrently and see which one plays out best, see what the response is after 30, 60, 90 days, and then rinse, repeat. Uh, with DARE, it's a much more interesting and active system. The dynamic portion of it has uh, plays into two ways. One being, as you'll see in the way that the advertisements look themselves, but two in that it's a process which is actively uh, responding to lead behaviors and adjusting the advertisements in order to make sure it's delivering the best quality or best possible advertisement to the lead at any given time. So I'll take a moment just to kind of give you guys a, a glimpse as to what that would look like. So this, as you can see, is a DARE ad. Now, in contrast to a carousel ad where you'd see a static image, these images actually move on their own. And I'm not just talking about the left and right scrolling from the arrows. The, there's a slideshow that goes on each uh, section or quadrant of the, the, of the carousel as well. And if you went ahead and click learn more, it would take you right to that specific property. Now, let's say for example, this you know Carbondale property is exactly what I was looking for. Then I were to click on that and Let's say, for example, I, for some reason, decided not to proceed with anything. Um, I ended up having to take a call, sit away from my computer, close the window. Well, at that point, 
what Facebook would do is remember, this is the property that he was interested in and would show me more properties which match that area, uh, price range, bedroom, bath, et cetera, to try and make sure that that ad was more targeted to me and make sure that I ended up moving farther down through the funnel and becoming a lead. The results have been promising to say the least. Um, now I will say as a, as a caveat, these figures do come from a uh, test that we've run with our, our sample audiences before we did our uh, complete rollout of dynamic ads for real estate. However, so far the overall results have been promising. Um, we've seen an incredible success and in we've getting more leads, better conversion at a cheaper cost per lead. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So how does it work? Essentially, it starts with building up your inventory. So what that means is choosing which properties you wanna go ahead and use to go ahead and put into those dynamic ads for real estate. Then, once we've helped you with that process, we'll go ahead and run your ads. And one of three things can happen. A, the lead sees the ad, doesn't click on it, no problem, didn't cost you anything. B, the lead clicks the ad and doesn't sign up. As I described before, the advertisement will actually adjust itself based off of the preferences it remembers and show me more ads which match similar to what I clicked on to then encourage me to wanna to go ahead and click and sign up further. And finally, best option if the lead sees the ad and then they sign up, well then it goes right into your CRM and one of two things can happen. Either A, the lead goes cold or for some reason the lead just you know doesn't turn out to be a close, well then it goes right back through the system and we're hitting them up again on Facebook with properties that they may be interested in to try and encourage them and say, hey, you know, you still interested in looking for a house? Check this one out. This one matches exactly what you're looking for. Or ideally, they just continue to close and you're a happy agent. How we build your ads. So uh, at Chime, we have an awesome team on hand called our customer success managers. And they're on hand to make sure that your ads are exactly what you want them to be. And the first step in this process is helping you select your inventory. And what that means is we'll go ahead and, and you know, looking at your IDX and looking at the type of property that are available there, will help you filter out exactly what you wanna show. Now, this can be, you know, uh, hey, I only want properties from my specific service area, or I specifically deal in waterfront properties, I only want this property type, or hey, you know, I, I'm in the luxury market, I really only wanna focus on properties which match, you know, this price and up, and I wanna make sure that that's, you know, the, the luxury market, the only people that I'm advertising to, or, hey, I, I only wanna advertise properties for my brokerage to help move that along. Um, we have tons of different options, and really that's where your customer success manager is gonna come into play and working with you to discuss that, figuring out what's best for the nature of your specific business, and then helping to push that along into action. Getting new leads. So, as I described earlier in the process, Upon clicking on that learn more and clicking on that advertisement, they'll be given an option to see a Facebook lead form, at which point they can submit their info and then go ahead and be taken to a page which matches exactly what they're looking for. So if they clicked on a property here, that's the property that they're gonna end up in. Um, as I mentioned before, these platforms really don't uh, like the idea of bait and switch or like the idea of an advertisement which uh, doesn't give the lead or the, the user, the experience that they were looking for, we make sure that this is consistent from the first contact all the way to finish. Now, here's the fun part of working with the CRM. And this is where it gets pretty technical, but pretty interesting. So any lead that comes in is going to be automatically scored by us. And it's a dynamic score. So, you know, let's say for example, um, I'm looking for a new property and I contact an agent and I say, okay, cool, I browse around. They're gonna say, okay, well, you know, this lead is, is somewhat interested. And then I happen to go on vacation for two weeks. Well, at that point, the system's gonna say, all right, well, he's not looking at anything. He's not responding to any calls. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and lower that score down. Essentially meaning that's not a lead that you need to prioritize right now. Which again, goes into one of the issues that we've seen at the very beginning of the slides, which is talking about, interacting with leads, which are kind of a waste of time um, and may or may not be interested at the time. Well, by focusing on the ones which have a higher score, you then prioritize your attention to that group of leads, which is more likely to close. And a benefit 
instead of this being a dynamic system is let's say after I come back from vacation and I start saying, all right, well, I'm really interested in going and, and looking and seeing what, what else is out there. What did I miss out on? The more I click, the more I engage with the IDX site, the more that I, I you know, um, browse around, the Chime CRM is going to take note of that behavior and then in turn boost my lead score up. And with that, depending on the lead score that I have, we'll then choose the way that we're going to, to nurture that lead or the way that you're going to engage with that lead moving forward. So it effectively, effectively functions as this. You have your lead database, and in this case being Chime. And what we do is we say, okay, is this a good lead? And again, the way that we quantify that is by looking at the lead score. If we see that, hey, it's a great lead score, awesome. Well, Smart Plan Activate. What that means is that we're going to go ahead and nurture them via email, uh, text message, or phone call. And Smart Plan is our automated templated systems which do this. Now, uh, there is a templated system. We do have a lot of choices as to which direction you want to go. However, this is completely within your control. You can customize it. You can do you know, something which is completely your own thing. It's all within your hands as to how you want to go ahead and, and shape the direction of your follow-up. At that point, as it goes through the process, well, did the deal close? If yes, awesome. If not, if for some reason the lead has gone cold, maybe the person went on vacation, maybe you know they stopped paying attention, maybe something happened in their life and things got hectic, no problem. You don't need to go ahead and have a, a kind of a pushy or a direct follow-up by continuing to email and call and email and call and send text messages. We'll go ahead and put them right back automatically into the online lead nurturing system. We'll go ahead and see those advertisements again, then go right back into the database saying, hey, look, they clicked on another advertisement. Maybe they're interested in talking again, and you can save those follow-up touch points for when they're most effective. So um, that is essentially you know, the, the bulk of our lead generation offerings in a nutshell. Uh, we do have a lot more that we offer in terms of you know, branding ads or property promotion ads, which can help to uh, showcase specific properties or to promote open houses. Uh, one thing I'm happy to discuss during this call is that we actually have a special promotion in that uh, if you happen to sign up for three months of Chime Lead Generation today, uh, we'll be able to give you $100 credit towards lead generation. Um, all that said, I'd like to open up the floor, see what questions we have that come in. Okay, um, can we only run ads on properties that we are the selling agent for? So the specifics on that's gonna depend on, on what your MLS allows. Uh, there's different rules depending on different MLSs. However, as you can see, and I'll, I'll kind of go through the uh, slides again. One thing that we do to stay MLS compliant for a lot of the different MLSs is make sure we put the listing agent right there on the advertisement. But however, um, this is one of those things that you'll have to discuss with your CSM, as well as looking over the specifics of your MLS arrangement. Who should I find to sign up? Uh, if you'd like to sign up, there's going to be individuals who will take your information after this call and can go ahead and contact you. Is this done in our Facebook ad account or yours? So um, this will be done straight from your Facebook page. We can go ahead and make sure that it's going to uh, be completely branded on uh, you. So this is not going to say something like, you know, an advertisement for Chime. Again, that's kind of going against what we're, we're looking for. We specifically are doing this to market you and to boost your brand at the same time we're trying to bring you more leads. How much budget should I start with and do I need to nurture my leads or do you? Um, in terms of the budget, that's a, a, a kind of a layered question. Um, ultimately, the real answer to that is gonna focus on a few things. Uh, one being what your goals are, Two being which area you're in. Um, you know, if you're in an area which has uh, high property prices, then of course the advertising ecosystem is going to be more expensive. It sort of functions like an auction house. So the more people that are participating, the more people that are, are throwing money into the auction house, well, then of course the more expensive it's going to be. And at that point, if you want to get better results, well, then you want to go ahead and, and put more budget into it, especially because um, the larger budget you operate with you can sort of bully other players out of the out of the online auction house, so to speak. But um, again, ultimately, I, I think that's something that's best to discuss with your CSM, best to discuss in, in terms of, okay, here's my market, here's what I'm looking for, here's my budget, 
what's the best way to allocate this, um, you know, between the two platforms and, and uh, essentially how should I move forward? And as the, as the secondary question to that, do I need to nurture my leads or do you? Uh, well, again, the, that goes into what I discussed in terms of the lead score and in terms of the nature of the lead coming in. So uh, if it is a lead which you know has already moved forward and is showing promising uh, lead score and, and they think that they're you know at that point indicating that they're good for nurturing via smart plans, well then at some point you're you're definitely going to want to step in and make sure there's a human touch point to uh, try and move that um, contact into a close. However, in the event that maybe they're just looking, maybe some of the contact inf information isn't valid. Well, it's okay to just let that run through the system. And then, you know, what can happen is that they might say, oh, goodness, you know, I am really interested in this, but uh, I went and submitted some wrong information. Well, let me go ahead and either update my information or re-register now that I'm, I'm more interested later on in the process. So that, that way we can actually get those conversations started. Can you choose between pay-per-click or Facebook, or do you have to do both? Uh, that's a great question. And yes, you can choose as to which channel you want to go through. Um, in terms of the best long-term plan, I, I, I do recommend going with both if your budget can support it. However, uh, you do have the freedom as to uh, you know which which uh, channel you you effectively want to go with. Um, is as a follow-up to that, you know, I, I hear a lot of people asking, okay, so what do you recommend over Facebook or Google? Um, again, it really kind of depends as to your system and what you're doing. So let's say, for example, as an individual agent, you don't have a lot of time to go ahead and, and you know, work with these leads that come in. Um, I would maybe go with a higher intent channel like Google because we're, we're matching what the leads are looking for. So essentially, they're searching out properties for sale and, and you're going to make sure you put a, a, an advertisement that matches that. Um, however, you know the Facebook leads, as I mentioned, they're, you're still going to get good leads. They're still there. You're just going to need to take more time and, and follow up. You're going to need to take more time and making sure you set up that that uh, automated nurturing to get the best bang for your buck when it comes to Facebook. And in some places, you're going to get a much better result. Uh, you know, there's really when it comes to advertising, the only rule is that there's kind of no rules and that um, there's exceptions to everything. So that's why it's really key to have those kind of um, sit down discussions with your CSM to figure out essentially what have we seen in your specific area and what we think is going to work best. What kind of volume have your clients seen on a monthly basis after starting with a service? Uh, again, that goes into you know the, the difference in terms of what sort of budget you're going to go ahead and put into it. Um, whether you want to have a focus on buyer or seller, uh, if you're, you know, advertising for an agent or advertising for a team or advertising for a brokerage, um, ultimately the, the answer is really variable. So I can't give you a, a flat number, but uh, I recommend, you know, as a follow up, letting us know which area you're in. We can then go ahead and say, okay, so for an agent with this budget in this area, advertising on this channel for this type of lead, we can go ahead and, and you know, expect around this amount. And uh, one thing too is that the you know as the process goes along, with you know there's a mixture of there's there's optimization that occurs both in terms of on our side, both in terms of the big data side on, on Facebook and Google. And as these campaigns go along, the performance does get richer, and we are then able to give you more leads at a lower cost per lead, um, which is something that I think is really important to mention. We're we're at every step of the process really working to give you the most leads that we can give you at the lowest cost. Uh, is the ads set up specifically designed to market properties only or are there branding opportunities? Uh, yes, absolutely. So for the um, the ads that I discussed today was specifically on the, the lead generation side. Um, those are, are specifically mark or specifically property based. However, we do have a, an entire offering um, for branding, um, you know, we offer branding ads, property promotion ads, uh, the open house ads that I, I was referring to. We do have a lot of offerings like that. Um, chances are, if it's not one that, uh, it's, if it's not an ad type ad offering that I say that we've, you know, we're in testing or, or maybe we're not really so sure about if we want to go ahead and roll that out widespread nationwide yet, uh, we do offer it. Can I target part of my listings or do I have to advertise all of them? Um, again, that's something which from the very beginning of the setup, you can choose as to uh, how you want to set your inventory. So 
if it's something in which you want to advertise only your listings, you can do that. If you want to advertise only listings in, you know, your specific city or neighborhood that you're, you know, dominating and that's where you want to focus on, that's possible as well. So what if I don't have any listings and I work mostly with buyers? So uh, with that, again, as I kind of mentioned earlier, the uh, ability to, to advertise in terms of on the Facebook side um, will sort of depend on your MLS's specific rules. Uh, in general, most of them, as long as you include the listing agent's information, they're going to be okay with it, at which point you have no problem in terms of advertising with that. Again, that is just something though that um, we caution everyone just to double check and make sure what their MLS's arrangements are, what their requirements are before going into the process. So that way, um, you know, everything's on the up and up. However, that said, in the event that your MLS is, is absolutely against that, uh, you can always advertise on Google and then just focus on the um, area pages and it won't take you on a specific property, but it'll take you to um, the, you know, a specific area or segment of an area uh, on your Chai Mighty X page. Would you be able to advise a budget once goals are discussed? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's really important that you have those conversations with you know, your CSM. Um, really, we're, we're partners in your success. Our, our slogan is, you know, you found your partner in Chime. Uh, we want you to be a successful agent because ultimately that's going to make you a happier customer and uh, a, a long-term you know, partner in our growth as well. So with that, have a sit down, talk with us, have a call. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss what, you know, the best way that, that we think you should move forward. And at that point, we'll be able to tell you, hey, if you have this much that you can, you know, get away with, we su suggest going with this much. Ultimately, your goals are going to decide the budget um, as well as what you can, you know, afford at the time. But we'll go ahead and see what we can do in order to make that, that budget stretch the best that it can to deliver you the best results. Sorry if you said this already, but are there packages we buy from Chime to get this set up? Yes, so um, if you're interested in working with this and, and giving this, uh, these advertising offerings a shot, um, if you're already a customer, please go ahead and reach out to your customer success manager, or rather actually uh, we'll have them reach out to you. Um, if you're not already a Chime customer, uh, hang tight and just send us a message and, and just say that you're interested in the chat and we'll make sure that we have one of our sales team to reach out to you to discuss specifically which package would be a best fit. Are Facebook dynamic ads better than Google? Uh, interesting question. Um, so going back to what I said about, you know, there are no rules in advertising. Uh, you will see that in some cases the performance is better. Uh, in some cases the performance is better on Google. Uh, you know, again, if you do have an individual who's really savvy on Google and he's advertising and throwing tons of budget and, and to advertise and spend in your area, then I would say absolutely avoid it because you don't want to deal with that competition that's going to drive your, your cost per lead up unnecessarily. Um, but maybe on the flip side, you have someone who's awesome at Facebook and they're throwing tons and tons and tons of budget at Facebook and we can be trickier and maneuver around it on the Google side to deliver a more targeted experience that's going to be one which is not going to be as expensive. Um, that said, uh, overall, I like them both. Uh, and I think that they both hit, again, different segments of the marketing funnel. Um, I recommend using both concurrently uh, if you can support it and running them side by side. So that way you're dealing with uh, a variety of leads at different stages of the nurturing process. And again, one of the really fun things about what we're doing with Facebook dynamic ads, um, effectively, because it take, it's really, really difficult and, and really uh, technically uh, difficult and time consuming to set up the, you know, everything from the Facebook pixel and how you're going to set up the, ad, the advertising inventory. With that, um, when you're advertising on Facebook with us, uh, you're going to be able to, to have a, a better quality ad, a better quality ad experience than typically what you'd get if you were advertising on your own or dealing with uh, a partner who's maybe not as technologically savvy. That said, it's something you absolutely can do on your own. Um, I will go ahead and say that it's something which is really, again, if you can do it, it's going to take a long time. Um, but, you know, that's why we, we go ahead and take care of this for you. 
can we get a copy of the slide deck to help us visualize and understand the system process, both for ourselves and as we develop our marketing plans and training for our own staff? Uh, absolutely. So uh, what it will go ahead and do is for anyone who signed up for the webinar, we'll go ahead and send a follow-up email where they're not only going to get the slides, but they're going to actually get a video recording of me speaking and going through the entire slides. Uh, so that way you can you know, stop or re-listen to any portions you might have missed out or are a little bit unclear on. Great question. Uh, using the Facebook lead form, do we need to set up Xavier to get the leads in the chime? Short answer, nope, we'll take care of that for you. If a lead successfully closes, does the remarketing cease to that lead on Facebook or Google? So uh, that's a great question. And the answer is yes and no. Um, yes, we can make sure that you're not going to go ahead and, and uh, effectively waste your advertising budget on them if they've already closed. However, uh, you can also segment your ads to go ahead and, and run uh, retargeting ads to your sphere. So let's say, for example, you wanted to run an ad saying, okay, I have, you know, all these people who have, who have had a closed deal um, within the past six months. Let me go ahead and, and put an advertisement saying, hey, you know, hope you're doing well. Um, if you know someone who's looking for a realtor, uh, I'd love it if you recommend me. Please share this post. And at that point, you can go ahead and remarket to a group of people who have already closed, but still get a lot of value out of them because you're, you're marketing to people who are already, you know, hopefully happy customers and willing to spread the word about how awesome you were. Who do we contact to discuss the details for our market? Uh, um, after this call, we'll make sure that one of our customers, success, goodness, can't say that. Uh, I'll make sure that one of our customer success managers reaches out to you to answer any questions you might have. So is this a monthly chime fee on top of paying for the Facebook ad spend? Are there different pricing packages? Uh, yes. So the if effectively what it's broken down into is there is an ad management fee, which goes depending on the ad spend. Um, and the rest just depends as to how much advertising, advertising budget you want to go ahead and invest into this. And again, there are different packages, which um, we can go ahead and, and have someone discuss with you after this presentation. I mostly work with new construction homes. Are you able to advertise for this? Um, another great question. So essentially the ability to advertise uh, on our end, particularly with the dynamic ads for real estate, depends as to uh, how that information comes into your Chime IDX. So in the event that we can go ahead and filter out by that, um, you know, by that feature or by that home type, then it is something that we can go ahead and, and uh, then focus on with the dynamic ads. Uh, and if it's something in which, um, you know, your essentially your MLS offers, it's something that we can go ahead and use to structure ads. Oh, I love uh, getting into details here. So on PPC, how do you focus on ads? General keywords or long tail keywords? So um, for the sake of the audience, what I'll go ahead and do is, is kind of explain the difference first, and then I'll go ahead and answer the question. So um, general keywords would be something like homes for sale. Uh, whereas long tail keywords would be something like um, homes for sale in Southern Austin. Uh, with that, the answer is a mixture of both. And part of that depends on uh, you. So again, this is really why I stress the importance of working with your customer success manager. Uh, in the event that you have a very well-defined area, in the event that you have a very well-defined market, then we'll go ahead and use that to, to make sure that the long tail keywords and the ad groups are focused based off of that so we can go ahead and deliver an optimal experience. For some agents, they really just say, hey, I really wanna focus on volume. And so, you know, with that, we will go ahead and include some long tail keywords, but we won't necessarily keep the focus on that. We'll keep the focus and budget more towards the short tail side. Uh, however, we do offer both and we can customize that depending on to, again, what your focus is and what you're looking for. Pardon me. Uh, okay, great question. What if there are more than one agent in an area? How do you work with different agents in the same segments? Uh, so effectively, the way that we do this is this. Um, as I mentioned from the up the top, there are no shared leads. So if you're working with, if, if you end up getting a lead that's your lead and, and your lead uniquely, uh, we don't offer market exclusivity in terms of the way that we advertise. However, what we do have is in the event that we find that adding on a, a another 
you know, advertiser will significantly impact the uh, advertisements of the remaining agents in that area, we will go ahead and essentially put a quarantine on it um, until then. But uh, typically speaking, you're only really going to see that happen when you're dealing with really, 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 really large ad budgets because of the fact that those audiences are so large. So as long as everyone's following the best practices, um, you know, you are already going to be competing in any area you're advertising with, with other agents in your area. Um, the benefit of uh, working with us is you're probably going to be doing it better. Uh, and with that said, even if you're at, if there are multiple agents in the same area advertising with us, uh, effectively that just means you're going to be at the top of the, the you know, um, group or, or, or getting the best uh, response or that you'd be getting as opposed to, you know, the remaining agents who are advertising. Are you advertising on Instagram? Uh, yes, we do offer advertising on Instagram. Actually, the dynamic ads for real estate also works as an ad placement on Instagram. Um, that said, um, with your specific area, I, I would go ahead and, and make sure to bring that up to the CSM. Uh, for dynamic ads for real estate, we've seen it work really well on Facebook. On Instagram, it's something that we're still optimizing on, um, but there are some areas that we've seen it work out well. So depending on yours, maybe we were, uh, you know, we recommend it. Maybe we'd say, hey, uh, it's a little bit risky. We recommend sticking to Facebook. Um, again, it's kind of on a case by case basis. Let's see. Jumping through the questions again. So um, you're already handling our landing page for seller leads. What are you doing to target ads for that group also? Uh, so effectively, um, you know, that depends. I don't know. I'm not really familiar with your case specifically and as to uh, if you're already doing lead generation with us. Uh, but the way that we'd go ahead and do that follow up essentially depends as to your market. And again, you know, I, I hate to repeat the same thing, but uh, it's really a, a tailor fitter or targeted process. So, and even that you are running ads with us, uh, I do recommend talking to us to say, hey, look, you know, what are you doing? How, um, how can we improve this? How can we make it better? Or in the event that you're not, the conversation would be more along the lines of, uh, you know, right now we have a landing page with you guys. How can we make sure we're getting more seller leads to that? So that, that way we can go ahead and have more conversations started. Okay, so um, that's all the time I have for right now, but uh, I will make sure that uh, I send this out to anyone attending. If you do have any additional questions, by all means, please feel free to ask away. Uh, we will have people contacting you uh, at the end of this presentation to reach out to you. And thank you so, so much for attending. It was awesome to uh, discuss these uh, you know, topics, which I'm, I'm pretty much a nerd about and getting some really awesome questions and hearing guys' feedback. So thank you. Um, we will be doing more of these webinars in the future. So uh, if there's anything you're specifically looking to hear more about, um, reach out, let us know if, if you know, uh, next month we're going to be doing a lot talking about SEO and we're going to be talking a lot about uh, our IDX pages and then, you know, what we do unique and, and cool with those. And, um, you know, we're open to feedback as well. So if there's something you want to find out more about or you'd like to see, let us know and, you know, maybe we can put something together for you. So thank you. And until next time, bye-bye everyone.